Ah, hello there, young traveler. You might not know who I am. I am the wizard bear. Confused? Do not be. I am a friend here to enchant you with the tales of another world. Epic battles, mysterious monsters, and princesses. Oh, what? No, no princesses? Oh, oh, okay. Okay, we'll scratch the princess part. Either way, it is a tale like you have never heard. Well, unless you pay, watch any fantasy thing. You know what? You've probably heard a few tales like this. You know what? I'm losing focus. I'm a mysterious bear in a cave here to tell you a magical tale. Also, sorry for sorry this sorry that this video took so long to come out. I did not realize how long it would actually take to make this thing. Either way, it's time. Time to introduce the time to begin the story. You know what? Just cut to uh, just cut to the intro. Just cut to the intro. <laughs> Our story begins as we focus on two adventurers. Taz, a tabaxi warrior, strong, noble, not the smartest, but you know, you get, you kind of, you, but he tries, he tries. His friend, Druid, basically everything Taz is not. <laughs> it's kind of a yin yang thing we're going with. It works, it works. Our two brave adventurers had just gotten done finishing a quest for a farmer. He had been plagued by a cave full of spiders coming down to his village and eating his crops, his cattle, and two of his children. Yeah, it got, uh, it got ugly. Either way, our two adventurers had just slain the foul beast and were now coming back to, to receive the reward. As they were chatting, suddenly, they were suddenly teleported to what seemed to be a ruined church and were greeted by a young priestess who they did not recognize. Mainly because they also don't go to church that much and you know, it's like also like randomly teleporting. You know what, you, you can, it's not that hard to imagine you recognize her. The two, you know, I can't keep doing this voice either way. I, I, <laughs> this is not... I'm going to switch to my normal voice for a little bit. So, um, yeah. Also, Taz is the character I'm playing. I probably should have mentioned that first. God, this is going great. Great. This, that's what this is going. All right. So we were greeted by this young priestess. And seeing as we didn't know who he were, we were kind of on edge. I, I remember reaching for my sword. But she didn't told us that she was the one who summoned us here. Well, she prayed to a god to summon us here. I forgot which god. Like, I, I remember the DM told me, but I didn't, like, it was a one shot, so I didn't, like, write anything down. Either way, she told us that she had called for help because this town we were in, I forgot the name of the town, too, if it had a name. I don't think it did. Hopefully it didn't. Was in trouble. Uh, bandits had taken over the local bar and were harassing the people. Children were disappearing at night. And the town had been hit with, the town, which was like a farm town, had been hit with a monstrous flood. And their usual irrigation system was not working. So, seeing as we were summoned here, we had no idea where to go. We decided to help. On the condition they pay us, and of course give us some communion wine. So the first thing we, uh, Taz and Reggie, Taz being me, I think I already said that, <laughs> me and Reggie went to, we went to do mess with the flood, the, fake try to fix the irrigation system, since that's not like the easiest thing to do since there wasn't like any mystery behind it. When we got there, it was this, this like, basically all the dirt had made it practically unseeable. So there is no telling what was in there. So I remember jumping in there, and it came immediately to my waist. And Reggie, who was much shorter than me, 
he was basically just floating with basically only his face not emerged. It was adorable. You can you can see him paddling his little hands. So um, because he couldn't see anything, I really just all I really did was just stick out my sword and start stabbing into the water. And I managed to hit an opening for the irrigation system. And when I did that, it cleared out a lot of the muck that was in there. And a tiny bit of, like, and then a tiny little bar went through the irrigation system, fixing it. So, for a while, that's what I was doing. I was just stabbing my sword in the ground, here, there, everywhere, stab, stab. And bit by bit, the water was kind of clearing up. And that went on for... I don't know how much time in game, but like outside, like five minutes, minutes, and then Reggie, who was kind of just focusing on staying afloat and not drowning, felt a bite on his arm, and he jumped up in pain, lifted up his arm. It, it was just a snake, but because we weren't expecting anything in the water in the first place, I just grabbed my sword and just shot the thing in half like into little pieces. Uh, Reggie then pulled the head of the snake out of his arm and threw it. He was fine, like it didn't do much damage or any poison damage. And I just went back to clearing the irrigation system. However, the snake, which had been cut into pieces, which is like, it was bleeding out, not, not like crazy, but there was blood emerging from it. And what we didn't know at the time was that was attracting a whole horde of deadly ass piranhas. I don't know what they're officially called, but they're piranhas. They, they function the same way and everything. So we just see these piranhas come out of nowhere and just chomp the hell out of the last remaining bits of the snake. And we realize um, we don't want anything to do with this. And just get out of the pod and leave. We were going to head back once we had more information or not. But like, we have a time, a time for the So we headed into town. The town was a normal town. You had um, the bar, as previously mentioned, a city hall. The church was a few miles away from it. Like there was nowhere in town you would need to go like by horse to get to. You could walk around the whole town fairly simply enough. You don't get to catch my breath. Uh, the town was only humans, which is why whenever we, we started, as we walked down, most of them just kind of looked at us with curiosity, like, oh, I've never seen a, a tabaxi or a cobalt before, since it was just strictly human town. Um, as we're walking, the first thing we noticed was um, the hospital, because just like the church, it was also kind of run down to crap. It was standing a little bit better, but... Yeah, like the cross that it had was like torn in pieces and it just wasn't in the best condition. So I just decided to go in there. So I began opening the door and it was kind of dark. Like the only light I had was the light coming in from the door. And bit as I opened the door, more and more and more light shined in and then I saw the silhouette of what looked like this old little lady. So then I just swung the doors open and I could just barely make out the fa her face because the doors didn't open like really wide and she was still like at the edge of the light. And of course, me being polite, gentle cat person I was, I said hi. And she looks at me with just dead eyes, dead eyes and just shouts, leave. And I immediately... Well, actually, for, I immediately leave. I then go to Reggie and then tell Reggie to open the doors next. He does, but she, he's so short she doesn't see him. If, if you don't get the joke, Reggie is really short. It's a, it's a running theme. So after that, we decided to go to... We started walking down for the, the town where we saw the bar where... There were only two bandits out outside the bar the rest were inside and the two were just hackling anyone who got too close to the bar throwing bottles uh, sh shouting insults at them and everything i don't believe they saw us i think they saw us and said something i can't remember but we just ignored them and kept going because we were heading to town hall to talk to the mayor 
who turns out didn't exist. Yeah, um, so that old woman from the hospital, she was apparently the countess, and she was the one running the town. But I just thought town hall, mayor, it, you, like, it, it made sense. It made sense to my mind. So we get to the town hall, and there's no one there, no guards, no nothing. So we kind of just explore with ease. We get to the door that looks like that looks like it's gonna lead into the mayor's room, but it's locked. So Reggie just starts examining the lock, looking for a way in, and I, I punch it. I just like punch the living hell out of it. And I roll. I remember rolling, a, I believe, pretty high, but apparently the door was reinforced, so all that happened was a loud echo sound. Like, I hit it and then boom. Just like a noise echoing throughout the halls. And and then we just heard footsteps coming towards us, and out came Derek. You know, Derek. The character I'm just introducing right now, here and now. So um, Derek ex was asking, asked, of course, like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you beating on our mayor's door? Who are you? And we told him that the priestess summoned us to help fix the town's problems. He was, I don't think he thought, like, he was like, like, so the priestess was actually fairly new in town. I don't know what happened to the previous owner of the church. I don't think I asked. But... She basically didn't really have the townspeople's trust. Trust, so when we, so us saying we were with the priestess didn't really mean much to him. Uh, so we got to talking, and with the, he's sort of in charge of the town due to the fact that the countess, the creepy-ass woman we saw in the hospital, was sick. She had got some sickness, and now was her mind was barely functioning. Um, he told us that the city's guards, the ones protecting them, were actually all killed by the bandits. And that due to the flood, they are running low on food. Yeah, this town was getting its ass kicked. I asked about the disappearing children. He didn't know much. So we decided to go ask the, the kids who were still here, see if they knew anything. Well, we, we tried to ask the kids. They ran immediately as we started approaching them. So when that failed, we just walk up to the parents, one couple. Couple, they didn't know much because one, their child was still with them. But they did point us to a house that belonged to a couple known as the Hiltons. And they said they were the ones who recently, just recently lost their child. And maybe they know something. And that's where we headed next. And that's where we headed. Uh, so we knocked on the door. We knocked on the door of the Hilton Town. And first, obvious, and the one who came out was Mrs. Hilton. Um, old, not an old woman, maybe like mid, like late 30s, kind of portly. Portly and obviously depressed. Her eyes were red from all the tears. And she spoke only mostly in a whim whimpering voice. What? Why are you here? What do you want? Uh, we explained ourselves, and we and we asked if she could remember anything about the night her child disappeared, which wasn't probably like I think it was like the second thing I asked her. So obviously, you know, didn't really give her a bumper for that. And she went, she, and she started crying, which alerted her husband, Mr. Hilton. I don't, I didn't ask their names personally. Who came up who came down the stairs and he was just demanding what to know what did we do to his wife we explained ourselves again like we meant no harm we're trying to figure out what's going on we wonder if he knew anything he he was not really happy of us to hear but he cooperated for the most part and just told them like the night there was nothing really special about that night it just sort of felt the same but their child was gone the next morning he, they allow us to investigate the room, but we don't find anything save for some glass. And there's like nothing wrong with the, like I examined the glass, but there's like nothing special about it. It's just regular old glass. Um, so we leave. We have no leads and no one who to talk to. But then the children who ran away from us earlier surrounded us. They were apparently more willing to talk because, 
you know, saw us around, walking around, just talking to the adults. They seemed to trust us for the most part. So obviously we're not going to hurt anyone. We asked, we asked each of them if they knew anything. They said no. They just really missed their friends. We then ask um, a boy named Tyler, and he says, at first he's kind of hesitant, but he says that he actually remembers believing seeing one of his friends. He told us that while he was at the hospital, he saw his friend, who turned out to be the Hiddleton's son, that disappeared. Like the day or two after he disappeared, he saw what he believed to be their son on the second floor, second floor, and he saw him barely creeping out. His he seemed sick and ill, like something was very wrong with him. And he went to, t and before he could take another step, suddenly all he heard was a, a voice mistake, going, Mistake, mistake. And he turned around and it was the Countess. He tried to ask what she was talking about, but she just kept repeating the same thing over and over. Mistake, mistake. And then she just left, like randomly. He looked back. But he looked back and his friend was gone. He told us that he wanted to tell everyone, but he felt like there, but he believed that it was just something he saw and he wasn't sure. So after hearing that story, me and Reggie raced back in the hospital, broke through the door, and just started questioning people. It is what we should have done. Like, I really don't remember what my reasoning was why I didn't immediately go out to the hospital after seeing that. But it said we just went to go talk to Derek again and ask him about the hospital. Make more steps for ourselves. He said again he didn't know anything because the only people allowed on the second floor are the sick, the countess, and our two helpers who are Tom and Susan. So I asked, um, okay, well, since I know the countess is not in her right mind anymore, uh, let me go. Let's talk to Tom and Susan. He said it would take some time to find them. Find them find them and to just wait here and he goes off to try and get them so we're waiting for I, I get only like a minute I believe in that believe and when I turn to Reggie and just go like I look down at him and shoot him this serious look and put on my sunglasses that I totally have let's go fuck up some bandits so we headed to the bar and the bandits who had previously been drinking were still drinking and harassing you know, I got the clothes. And they saw us approaching and they started egging us on a lot. We didn't do anything at first. Like, I believe I said, oh, I asked them, hey, can you leave town and don't come back? Because the sharpest sword in the world is diplomacy. It didn't work for shit. They just immediately started throwing bottles at us. Well, they threw three, but two of them missed. And I mean... Like, long shot. They threw it, missed. Second one, missed. The third one, however, got me. And I, being the calm, tobacco warrior that I am, grabbed my sword and charged right at them with the intent to kill them. Which is what they actually did want, as they had got the weapons ready. Ready. Uh, we rolled for initiative, and I rolled the highest, I believe. So, I was, I was able to attack, like, so... They been just a, they were surprised and so in like the way the story was like I charged them so quickly they didn't have a chance to get their weapons ready and I took my great sword which was a claymore I believe like whatever it was just a really big sword and I swung it down ready and I missed what happened was I hit. The, the like the pillar of the bar that was right in front of him and my sword it wasn't and it just caught the sword I look at him and he looks at me and just like it's awkward because neither of us know what to do and what really hurt about this is like the way I built Kat, Taz is this is supposed to be a master swordman and the first time I'm using my sword, it is a complete and total fuck up. So, felt like a gut punch. And the second bandit who had, I don't believe a bow and arrow, but like that automatic arrow shooter thing. And he took a chance and he shot me and he hit me like right between my, 
right between, kind of in my elbow where my armor was like, sort of had a space in between it because the arrow got stuck in there and did, I don't remember how much damage. It wasn't a lot, but I was bleeding for a little bit. It was Reggie's turn next. So Reggie held up his um, staff, or bow stick, one of the two, and he started chanting and suddenly you saw these green little lights elements of nature entering the staff and powering it and then reggie looked at the bandit with the bow and arrow automatic bow and arrow he jumped at him and he just like <laughs> hit him over the head with the hit him over the head with the uh, bow stick it apparently apparently the chant did something to make it harder suddenly because he did took a lot of bit of damage and staggered a bit but it was kind of silly I won't lie. I it was I forgot who attacked. I forgot what the other bandit did because he didn't. I think he swung his sword and he also missed because I don't remember him being able hitting me. So my turn. I get my sword out of the pillar. I swipe again. This time succeeding. And because I had a great sword and this is like a bandit with like little to no armor, it just cleaved him in half. Which was surprising. It was awesome, but also kind of surprising because I thought it was just, I don't know, I thought it was just going to like s cut him a little bit and then he would just fall down, but uh, no, he was dead. Two pieces. The other bandit just ran. Like, he ran so fast that we didn't even get an opportunity attack. He was gone. <laughs> so then I shout to the other bandits, come out and face us! Because I couldn't remember how many bandits there were in the bar. I wasn't trying to get like go in there and we just swarmed by 40 other bandits. And they didn't, of course. And <laughs> I pick up the the upper piece of the bandit and I throw it at the bar window. Trying to uh, my, my plan was to break the window and the torch will come flying through to scare a few of them out. But I guess I, I I don't think I failed the roll, but I guess I didn't have eye enough to break it. Maybe I did. Because the torso hit the window, it just didn't break it. So all I know are all, like, everyone, anyone in the bar just heard this boom and just saw one of their friends' upper torso, bloody part, just sliding down the, the window of the bar. It was... And I don't remember if I picked up the other piece and threw it too, but if I did, it also didn't break the window because the windows never got broken. And since that failed, we just said, okay, screw it. We jumped in and we're ready to fight. And there was only about two more bandits and then the bandit leader. So we break in, hero style, do a little pose. And the bandit leader who's sitting down just kind of looks at us and says, huh, well, looks like the service is in town. Which, I took offense to that, of course. So I just charged right at him and just went for a strike. He gets up, and then he just parries the shit like it was nothing. So I, I thought for myself, well, I guess we're... Oh, this is not going to be easy. And the battle... You know, like, thinking about it, it was a very simple battle, but a lot happened... <laughs> Like, Reggie got hit with, I believe, two arrows. I cut off a bandit's head. Me and the bandit leader just kept slice, taking slices at each other, each other. And I believe one of the other guys ran away. I forgot why. So halfway through, it's just me, Reggie, and the bandit leader. And Reggie gets, and the bandit leader managed to get two more strikes on him. He, does, he had this move where he can attack three times. He used two on me. And two on Reggie, and I got, and we both got hit. No, he used two on me and one on Reggie. And we both got hit. So Reggie just says, that's it, I've had enough. He drops his staff, he starts using his hands to create this circle-like motion. And these mysterious runes appear in the air. And then it just, the spell just hits the bandit leader. Because he cast it so where it appeared behind the bandit leader. It just hits him, killing him instantly. But it was, apparently there was like a kickback to it, so his dead body just flew across the room into the fireplace. And we had to literally stomp it out so it wouldn't set the bar on fire.
fire. So yeah, just just to recap, there are now two dead bodies, one of them decapitated and bleeding all over the place, and on the outside, there is a corpse that is cut in two that was thrown in front of the window. And Reggie's spell had just knocked any standing furniture down, and we, we this bar was a mess. So much so that when we told the bar keeper that we got rid of the bandits, she was happy until she saw what we left behind, the wreck we left behind. It was, uh, it was a mixed reaction. Either way, either way, we since we got a lot, we were way more injured than we thought, and the townspeople were kind of iffy on their heroes covered in blood, we decided to return to the priestesses, um, I mean, to the church to get some rest. And that's where we stopped the first session, I believe. Leave it, and that's where I'm going to stop here. I will continue the story later. Do not worry. This is, like I said, I'm going to break this into, I decided to break this into three parts. Um, yeah. But until then, I'm a, I'm a magical bear.